Nice. All right. All right. We always start with the salute. Yes. Salute. Oh, that wasn't loud enough. Let's do it again. Salute. And the crazy eyes. The works. crazy eyes. Ooh. So we are drinking manzanilla, but not just any manzanilla. Yeah, do you want to take folks through it? I'll explain what manzanilla is. Yeah, let's do that? that. So we're drinking something called sherry. Most of you who would be watching this already know what it is, but in case you don't, here's a quick tutorial. Sherry is a fortified wine, and it comes from a white wine, and basically they age it in barrels. And as it ages, there's a layer of yeast that forms over it called the floor, and it protects the wine from oxidation. And then they fortify it, you know, add more wine spirits, whatever. You could probably correct me on this. And then, no, you're nailing it. All right. Mm. And so what we have here is Manzanilla, but it's the kind of one of the wines that are fortified, fortified and aged under floor. <clears throat> and it comes from San Luca. San Luca. Thank and you. only from San Luca. And only. And anything else is Fino. Of this style. Of this style, yes. Yeah, and yeah so, we'll get into it. Yeah. Let's enjoy it first. I yes, just want to. Yes. And this is a unique kind of Manzanillo because it's um, very floral. Manzanillo is chamomile. Oh, Hence, yes. Right? I mean, that's a literal translation. Literal translation from Spanish, yeah. And is it possible to know Manzanilla from Fino? From Fino? Yeah. In like a blind tasting? Mm -hmm. You should try that. Yeah. It's difficult depending on depending on the producer and how they did it, but it can be done. Mm. I'm going to go in for one of these guys. Sean made these Hildas. Hilda or Gilda. Yep. Gilda. Named after the uh, mm. Rita Hayworth mm. movie. Salty and spicy. So when you drink this, oh, it's got to slow. This has got to be slow because um. Why? Because it has a lot of finish on it. Yeah. And you want to savor it, of course. Well, and you know, not a lot of people drink sherry to begin with, and a lot of folks think of sherry as sweet wine and something their grandma drank and things mm -hmm. like that. And, um, but these, you know, throughout Spain, this part of Spain in the southwest corner of Spain, Andalusia, where this is from, this is just daily drinking wine, mm -hmm. like half bottle at lunch. Nice. Kind of, <laughs> right? Well, they know how to live there. It has a dusty smell to it, too. Perfect. Abriza soil, right? Yep. So it's El dry. Abriza is the soil type. Low, low, low rainfall in the area, and you can definitely smell that. Well, the what these results? Yeah. I think. What the soil does, the Abariza is like this sort of chalky soil that um, retains moisture really well. Mm -hmm. So the rain they do get um, gets trapped within that in that soil because it gets hot there and. And obviously they would dry everything out otherwise if they didn't have a soil type that really retained that. Mm -hmm. um, just quickly on the food pairings here, we've done um, sherry, the, the styles of sherries are super food friendly. Um, so we have tonight we have some sushi, we have the, the Hilda's, which is basically a, um, it's an anchovy um, with a green olive. Um, a special type of anchovy, actually, a boca roni, a white anchovy, uh, the green olive, and then for the spicy part, there's like a, a papara, uh, like a uh, pepper, it gives it a little kick at the end. That, this was actually invented in the Basque country as a as a pincho, but it pairs so well with sherry. Um, and then the sushi, and then these rolls here are they? They're shrimp. Shrimp. Um... I think goisas. Okay. Uh, I have to look at the uh, cool. But um, courtesy of Trader Joe's. <laughs> okay. Dumplings, basically. <laughs> okay, right? got it. You know. Um, but yeah, Sherry's just ripping good with this style of cuisine. Mm-hmm. And it goes with it's super duper flexible. Yeah, we, we can even talk more about that later, like how how well some of these Sherry's pair with difficult things like vegetables, like. Yeah. Asparagus and uh, artichoke and 
things that a lot of other foods don't pair with. Okay. So it's cooked through <laughs> somewhat. It's okay. Came from a bag. It's not mm-hmm. going to be that great. Um, but I mean, it's cooked. You're not. It's yeah. Shrimp. It's which is which goes great with um, manzanilla. Sorry. Pause. Hmm. Good. Yeah. Turn down the music. Mmm. So. Yeah. Oh, let me get this in the frame a little better. But what makes this particular brand so unique? Oh, yeah. So this is um, an Alexander Jules Montanilla. And Alexander Jules, it, well, I happen to work with them <laughs> for them. But um, Alex Roussan, the, the founder of Alexander Jules, uh, started his business back in 2012 as a uh, excuse me as a sherry importing company. And what's interesting about this and what he's done here is he basically he'll go to the sherry triangle, go to the sherry region. And he was like the first person that I'm aware of or at least in modern day um, the United States, where he'd go and he'd taste through a bodega's um, stocks and then pick the barrels that, that sort of spoke to him to make a like a personal blend from those barrels. Um, so what's super cool about this is, um, and it might be difficult to see on the label here, but it, if you can, it says kind of faintly, eight over 41. And so that means Alex went to this bodega Right in San Lucar, because um, that's where Matsani is from, uh, and tasted through 41 different um, uh, barrels within the in that Solera, and then got a distinctive quality from eight of them that he wanted in in here. And he tends to look for just really a nice sort of freshness and um, sort of sense of place on these wines, and he. This is darker in color than a lot of Montanillas, and the reason for that is he's he's looking for um, just a really great expression, um, and he bottles them in a. There's a term called enrama, and he bottles them in rama, which um, well, the literal translation doesn't really help all that much. I think it's like off the vine or from the stick or something like <laughs> that. But um, what, what it means in the non-literal or in this uh, context is um, with with like a minimal amount of filtration and fining. So basically it's just tiny, tiny filtering so that all the essence of this wine is, is in here. This is like a living, breathing wine within the, mm-hmm. within the bottle because of that. Yeah. yeah, so that, yeah, I could go on and on, but that's mm-hmm. to me what makes this unique and super special. Yeah, so I started a list today. I wanted to have some talking points, and I don't know where it went, and it's in my mind, yeah. it's so much more cool than reality. <laughs> but that's okay. Like, and there's a lot of reasons why sherry is amazing, and one thing that's really evident is it's it's inexpensive. For the, I mean, it's for relatively, quality. yeah, yeah. And very inexpensive, um, inexpensive to, um, to age ratio too. So let's see, what's an average? Let's say I don't know, a seven-year Burgundy. Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, it, it depends on what kind of you know where within Burgundy it's from, and um, you know what level or rank it has. Like, is it? You know, Bourgogne or Village or Premier Cru or Grand Cru, that all and who the producer is all factors into that. But right. Yeah, it would be crazy expensive though. Well, there you go. It yeah, is... you're probably averaging into the hundreds of dollars a bottle, more or less. Whereas um, Montagnier and Fino are typically Jesus. about anywhere from two years to seven ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Maybe even more. even more in some cases. You want me to get that for you? Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Take some for yourself. Have okay. some ginger. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, the the so the two year that Mark that you mentioned, I'm gonna grab one slice of that. Okay. Um, two year is the minimum for any sherry, mm -hmm. right? And if it's going to be at that two year minimum, that's it's got to be a, a it's going to be a fino or a manzanilla because the other categories it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. um, the other categories of the dry styles being um, a Montiato, Palo Cortado, and Oloroso. Oh, sorry. Um, so it would it would have to be, you know, either a Montsonia or a Fino. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty rare that those. I mean, the, those two year sherries, like even the the major brands, kind of the more mass marketed supermarket brands like mm -hmm. the Tio Pepe's and the Laguitas, mm -hmm. um, they they're those are typically at least four years um, aging in the Solera. Um, so it's pretty rare. A lot of what's happening of where that two years coming from is there's a there's a, a desire to have um, sherry barrels mm -hmm. um, in the Scotch mm -hmm. whiskey industry, mm -hmm. and so what they're doing is they're just basically getting a little bit of sherry age on them and, and sending them off for for Scotch whiskey. So that's yeah, that's familiar to me now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because the so awesome awesome barrels. Which are American oak, by the way, these massive 600 liter mm -hmm. American oak um, can be hundreds of years old, and they would they don't want them to impart wood flavor into this wine, mm -hmm. right? There's no there's no wood flavor in this wine. No, it's no super barrel, no. no. So it's it's just super neutral old oak. And so they don't like buy new oak and just throw it into the regimen. They would they would keep an old barrel and like replace a single stave in that barrel mm -hmm. before they would just go buy a new barrel, right? Because they they want again they want to they want the wine to shine through. They mm -hmm. they don't want it to taste like barrel. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on in here just from the the floor cap, the yeast cap that you talked about mm -hmm. that um, just sort of beguiling like this these, these wines taste like no other wines in in the world really I mean there's there's nothing else like this there's this like essence of sea spray and umami and hence why it pairs so well with these these kind of salty briny umami driven kind of foods mm -hmm. anything ocean bound yeah ocean oysters Oysters are great, 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 great yeah. with, with Monsigny and Fino. Uni. Mm. It's funny. Un, un, uni sushi. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sea urchin. That's sea it. urchin. Yeah. What kind of thing? I, I know sometimes I remember the Japanese name for, for yeah. sushi stuff better than I remember the English okay. name. This is the spiny. That's a sea urchin. Because it's wow. spiny. Yeah. Like, see? You're not. I'm fine. sure everyone will know exactly what that means based <laughs> on what you just did there. You have a Tio Pepe, Pepe pen. I've been using this a lot. So we went to the <laughs> That's Sherry. so funny. What was it again? Uh, basically a Sherry convention in New York a couple of years ago. 2017. 17. It was the last one they did. Mm-hmm. And so glad we Pepe went. Pepe had, they had a, um, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Larry. Real, dog reality there. But yeah. There you go. Um, anyway, Slow down, um, buddy. one of the, not the founders, but, um, one of the heirs, yeah, one of the and, heirs Antonio of Flores. Said, yeah. he was speaking, so on and so forth, and they handed out these little pens for you to take notes with, and a, they gave you a little Tio Pepe pin, which I think I did put on my coat for a little while, I don't know where it is. I did not. You didn't? Wrong word. Right, I don't put pins on my coach. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. I can't really, I'm not really a pin person, but yeah. a pen person. This is pretty cool. I've been using it a lot lately. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's got the hat. That's the cool thing. All you right, I'm crushing through this, but that's what I do. <laughs> um. So it's inexpensive. Um, here's the thing: it's like if you and your friend or your significant other, whatever you know, 
one person likes red, one person likes white, it doesn't matter what grape you go with because it's all the same grape. But it's True. all different oxidation levels. So that's Oh, I know what you're talking about, yeah. right? Where the, the wines sure. that look like this mm -hmm. are are Mount Sinias and Finos, depending on which town it's aged in. Mm -hmm. And the wines that start to have um, darker color mm -hmm. also come from that same grape, mm -hmm. the Palomino Fino grape, but they get darker. Why? They're, they're oxidized. Well, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exposure to oxygen. O exposure to oxygen. Some never have that floor which eventually is the Oloroso, and some start with the floor, but it dies off, which becomes your Amontillado. Or, or Palo Cortado. Or Palo Cortado. Yeah, those are the ones that are kind of in between. Mm -hmm. um, and your favorite, of, again, we're only talking about the dry styles. There are sweet styles as well, made from mm -hmm. a different grape. There are two different grapes called Moscatel and Pedro Jimenez. Uh, those are for the sweet styles, or, or sometimes they're blended to, to make sweet styles, but mm -hmm. there's these five dry styles. What's, what's your favorite of the dry styles? Lately style? it's been Oloroso, but I've been more going towards the Montani and Pino. I mean, I've always liked them, but it wasn't until we actually had the opportunity to go to Southwest Spain, to the Sherry Triangle, to Jerez, and etc. Um, and it's like then having it in the bodega itself, like, ooh, now I get it, time and place. And mm -hmm. We talked about that last time, and it really is when you drink your lo the local stuff. It's really you see what the big deal is. There's a freshness there to the, to these wines that you oh, get sure. when you get them there. Mm -hmm. I think, and part of it is just the, the being there again. Mm -hmm. Like when you're in this town, the air smells like this wine mm -hmm. because you're so close to the water. So I'll um, I'll insert a map in here. Um, mm -hmm. just so folks can see sort of geographically where this is and um, but you know imagine you're on the you're on the very south southwest portion of Spain you can along the Atlantic and, and to the south is basically Africa mm -hmm. <laughs> so to, to give it some yeah, yeah, geographic idea so okay so it goes with really hard to pair food and super versatile as you can see mm. a variety i mean we have something pickled here olives and the do you like some more yes i know everything is pickled right not the olives of course but the it's yeah i mean this guy not the the bocaroni bocaroni that's not pickled no hmm. well i mean it sits in i guess it sits in vinegar yeah of sorts so. okay I'm gonna have. I'm going to have to. Well, they're so they're so. just great because they're again, they're they're briny and mm -hmm. sea spray just like this. Now they even go with um, asparagus and artichoke, which is nice. Yeah. Because vegetables, it's, it's yeah, nice. salads, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now here's another thing though, where where um, it kind of is a niche, not niche one, but it, it's a, fills a gap, if you will, of these hard to pair cuisines and mm -hmm. hard to pair foods. So, but yet for something that's really com um, common in, well, the United States, I guess, um, like a pizza. So here's, a, so here's what I wanted to do was I wanted to think of a food, throw it out there, would it pair with sherry? And if it does, what kind of sherry? What what oxidative level? Oh, wow. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. Like, for instance. Yeah, you've uh, thrown out pizza. Now we have to answer that. Pizza. I've I would wanted... not. I've never done it. Just because there's so many great pizza wines. Yeah. Well, that was... From Italy. Like, I... That, that I just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't mm -hmm. even. I'd maybe try it with an Oloroso. Yeah, maybe an Oloroso. What would go with that? Cause you but I'm having... like, I'm having pizza. I'm, I'm getting a bottle. I'm reaching for a bottle of Lambrusco, man. Like that's, it's almost like, that's the bomb for me. Like share, like you, you have like a hamburger. Would, would you pair Sherry with a hamburger? You could have Oloroso with a hamburger. Okay. okay. Well, they have the, the, the rule of thumb, Excuse right? Me. 
if it's if it swims if it swims Montanillo or Fino. Uh huh. Yes. Right. Right. If it flies Amontillado, and if it runs Oloroso. Okay. And pizza. Pizza doesn't <laughs> swim, fly, or run. So what are you gonna do? Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. There's um. There's some exception to that too, because like, because mm -hmm. the jamón ibérico, mm -hmm. the famous ham from Spain, mm -hmm. they run, but they pay, that pairs so well with like fino as mm -hmm. well, um, because of that saltiness that's coming through. Even Pigs though do they, swim. And oh, there you go. Naturally, I mean, I don't know about those. Wow, pigs. they never, do. Never thought of it that way. Yes, they do. They. Know I learned how to something swim. today. And in the Caribbean, there is an island, um, and tour it's a tourist attraction. Yeah. You can swim with the pigs. There you go. I'm not kidding. It's real. Who would make that up? <laughs> <laughs> they think like a long time ago when um, colonizers came in, um, they think there may, may have been a boat. Yeah. Obviously a boat <laughs> with pigs on it. It capsized, whatever. The pigs swam to shore and just kind of lived there. Yeah. And they're trying to protect the pigs. So you want to go swim with Wilbur and... Yeah. So technically it swims. There'd be... No, yeah. I, I can see no reason to lie about that. <laughs> no advantage could be gained. <laughs> I'm not... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There'd be no reason to... There'd be, there'd be no reason at all to lie, lie about that. I'm going to come up with a whopper. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really weird. Anyway, anyway in, yeah, go ahead. In, what's interesting about the Hamona Virgo too, I said salty, but they don't actually cure it like they do. Mm. Um, they don't pack it in salt like you would a prosciutto. That's right. It's just so naturally right. just beautiful and oily and amazing. It just does its thing. It does. And then you're going to have to edit in a picture of you with the leg O Hamona. Oh yeah, right. show, show that, folks right? what that looks like. Yeah, I can do that. Where were we before he so rudely interrupted us? You were talking about... Oh, I was just saying... 2014, that's where it oh, was yeah. from. Oh yeah. That Spain won the World Cup mm -hmm. in 2010. Mm -hmm. They had won the Euros in, in 2008. Mm -hmm. They won the World Cup in 2010. They won the Euros in 2012. So I was getting pretty used to them being really, really good. Yes. And winning all the time. Pretty much winning everything. Um, so I had some pretty high expectations for the 2014 World Cup. And? This was the one that was in Brazil. That's right. Okay. And um, they got bounced. Mm. They didn't even make it out of the group stage. I feel cursed though. Why? Well, here's why. Why? Oh, I'm still upset about this. Hmm. So their first round, their first match of the World Cup, 2014, mm -hmm. was against the Dutch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I see where this is going. And we went out to go watch the game. In the middle of the day, I, I took the afternoon off of work. Some friends went. Steve Brand went. Michael Ireland went. Some of his friends. Wasn't this Michael the picked the place? He picked a Dutch bar. We end up at a Dutch bar to watch Spain play the Netherlands. Wrong. Just wrong. <laughs> I don't think that bar exists anymore. <laughs> Which is good. I don't know. I may have thrown a Molotov cocktail in there one night and blew the place up. I'm just kidding. I'm trying not to sneeze. <laughs> That's why I'm doing that. Now I don't want to be great, you know. You want to step away? No, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> Looked at a light to see if you <laughs> yeah, had to sneeze or not. I really need to sneeze. He's like, no, I seem to be okay. It's yeah. Contained. Um, What's this? And this is when Steve Brand shows up in this it's orange, orange poppy looking blouse it was a blouse it he was a blouse so it, 
He was staying at a, yeah, they were This won't make the light of day. This no, it might, because okay. he deserves to be outed for this. Okay, well, our friend Because he was looking for something to, to, to antagonize, me. antagonize me. He doesn't care about yeah. this game. He just... He just wanted to antagonize me, his best friend. And it worked. <laughs> right? No? Yeah, oh, so and, and looking for I'm something sad. orange to wear had nothing in his wardrobe, therefore found a woman's shirt that was orange mm -hmm. that he that he decided to wear. There's no shame for wearing, wearing that. Wearing yes. What the shameful part was, it wasn't his. It wasn't his, wasn't his significant, significant others. It was the per... The apart it belonged to the owner of the apartment he was renting at the time. Okay, that is shameful. <laughs> okay, that's not yours. <laughs> oh, I don't care about that. <laughs> I do. I care that he uh, made Spain lose that football match. That's what happened. That's pretty powerful. Yeah. I didn't know Steve had such power. Steve doesn't have that kind of power. But, but Steve wearing an orange blouse has that kind of power. So it's like a yeah, it's like a superhero costume of sorts. So he's messing with oh, he forces just, unknown and I think they all conspired. Like maybe Michael said, Hey, let's go watch the game at a Dutch bar. <laughs> hey, you Steve's like, Oh, I'll find an orange blouse to wear. <laughs> We'll start this World Cup off in a miserable way and ruin Sean's life. <laughs> His entire life. Right I've never been the same. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's one of the worst days of my life. I was never the same. It was one of the worst days of my life. I'm sorry. That's. It wasn't that. It wasn't as bad because it was like it was just the first game that mm -hmm. day. It was the beginning of the worst. It was the beginning of the. Yeah. Oh, okay. Of right. well, they only no. played three Football. games and they were out. You know, it was horrible. Oh, I'm sorry. How do you feel about this wine? I think it's wonderful. Are we done? We're darn near. Oh, jeez, Louise. I was gonna say finish it, but don't quite yet finish what's in your glass. Okay. Because it's in Rama. There's mm -hmm. probably little floaties down ah, at the bottom. Floaties, floaties. In 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 the bottle. Okay. So we can try and see what's in there. Um, the floaties are nice. Mm -hmm. Little yeasty floaties. Mm. I think this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love this wine. I just love it. We made quick work of this. It's not a full bottle, so no. I don't feel quite as bad. But we did make pretty quick work of it. We did. What else? It's just so good. Oh, yeah. We didn't talk about the stemware. Oh, yeah. We do need to talk about that. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, sometimes you'll see, like, um, sherry served in, like, little tiny, tiny little glasses called copitas. Mm -hmm. um, when we do our sherry tastings for 4K No, we actually use these. Um, they're smaller glasses, but they have kind of a a bowl at the bottom and they're they're actually whiskey snifters so we we feel like that you know in a smaller pour brings out the aromas of the of the sherry really we well swish and swirl swish yeah and swish. um but with dinner just at the table um i'm gonna do this just the standard nice wine glass um for sherry it, it sort of belongs in here in my opinion really brings out the aromatics allows it to breathe a little bit. It's funny because I don't mind the copitas. I like, and I, I do like it, especially if I'm, um, it depends where I'm at, where I am. Or if I'm in more of an analytical, sure. Or, um, if the sherry itself is especially expressive or, yeah. um, higher quality maybe, or more rare of a sherry for sure. Yeah. I mean, if it's a sherry I'm very familiar with, um, yeah, if, you, if you're just kicking back, months, yeah. Mm -hmm. and small Capita's nice. You're, you're at, you're, I was thinking of Tobacco El Pasaje. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of too. Because they I serve like, in the Copitas. Yeah, I don't and, like that. And that's okay. great sherry too though. It's, it's El Maestro Sierra. It's really great sherry. It's super fresh, so you don't need the aromatics, I suppose. As much. You don't rely on those as much to well, and you're not, express itself. Yeah. And you're not. So there's that. You're there for the flamenco show. You're there for the flamenco. You're not sitting there with your beak in the glass, like, analyzing the wine. Mm -hmm. You're just 
enjoying life mm-hmm. like an amazing flamenco. It's one of my favorite places on the planet. Actually, a lot of my favorite places on the planet are in Spain. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like a lot. My favorite museums in Spain. Mm-hmm. My favorite soccer stadiums in Spain. My favorite live music joint is in Spain. My favorite um, hiking path. Yes. In Spain. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Just off, yeah, partially on the Camino de Santiago mm-hmm. in uh, in Basque Country. Mm-hmm. And... I mean, it's not a place I didn't like. In Spain, I can't think of a. I mean, everyone, everything has its own. It's such a regional. Yeah. Like a lot of countries, of course, but I mean, it's. I can't wait to take you to Galicia and uh, and uh, Asturias. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. It's so gorgeous. It's so green. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. But yeah, I don't even mind being landlocked there. I like mm-hmm. Madrid. I do too. I love Barcelona, but I I love Madrid. Mm-hmm. My favorite museum is Reina Sofia in Madrid. Mm-hmm. But this is Guernica. <clears throat> it's amazing. Do you like anything? There's still more sushi. Definitely a Hilda. Uh, maybe one more sushi, I guess. I want that and that belongs to you, by the way. That's oh no, I've it. had plenty. Go for it. Well, there are at least nine. I mean I'll eat it. I'd rather have that than that. Okay. Oh, then I I'll make that trade all day. Okay. Yeah, I'll have the sushi. Cool. Yeah, I don't pot stickers ain't uh, not really my jam. No. It's fine, but <laughs> it's not doesn't change my world. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah? It's been a week. <sighs> Transitioning to teaching fourth graders online. Mm-hmm. Went from you went from zero to a thousand on that and you know, hurry. Yeah. You're on spring break. I'm on spring break officially. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. Party. Right? You ready? Yes. Yeah. I, I'm going to buy some beach sand and put it in here. <laughs> That'd be nice. Right? Some chairs yeah, and yeah. I'll make you umbrella drinks all day. Nice. I'll put my sunglasses on. Put my right? Up. It's supposed to rain. Well, not only is it supposed to rain, um, too, for the good of... Yeah, for the good of all, we are required. No, it's we won't get in trouble if we do, but it's just not a good idea. We we live three miles from the beach, from the ocean. We can't go. No. No, that's all shut down. And well, the parking lot shut down. Right. Parking lot shut down. Yeah. It's because it's, it's a state ocean. park. It's yeah. it's it's officially shut down. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna just. You didn't say where we lived. We live in San Francisco. Yes. Oh, I just mm-hmm. yeah. Main assumption, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it's a good thing, and we don't want to cause trouble. We don't want to get or give, uh, you know, anything, and you know. Yeah. So, so you're saying you're tired. Yeah, I'm tired, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm worried about my kids. And, I know. Yeah. You did a good job for them, though. This yeah, these past. So. It's been three weeks. Basically. Yeah. I'm glad you're on spring break. Me too. I think we all could use some spring break. Spring break at home. Mm -hmm. Six feet away from everyone else. Mm -hmm. Minimum. Mm -hmm. Well, not me. (laughs) Jeez. You're clearly not six feet away from me right now. All right. But yeah, it's yeah, it's a different world right now. It is. And Someday we'll be back though. Yeah, well. well. Gosh, you were supposed to this month. Speaking of Sherry, mm-hmm. you were going to be taking mm. an advanced advanced class, right? Because Abby didn't mention she's a certified Sherry specialist. Mm-hmm. Um. And I'm a certified Sherry educator, and Lestau was putting putting out a program 
which is kind of the next step um, between certified Sherry specialist and, and certified Sherry educator. And you were going to go later this month because they were hosting it in, in Napa and mm -hmm. Cesar Saldana from the Consejo Regulador mm -hmm. was going to be there along with Lucas Paya from, from Lustau. And there was talk that Emma was going to join and huh, come out and then, um, you know, we're going to, yeah, I mean, you had already paid, you were going to go. Yeah. I was going to take was a couple gonna... days off of work and like, yeah. we can hang out. I mean, we're going to be in Napa, like, okay, if we could stay overnight there, but you know, since Emma's come, we'd be coming into town, hang out for a couple of days. I mean, here or whatever, wherever. And sadly, I mean, for safety reasons, you know, blah. I mean, just too bad. Well, we were supposed to. We were supposed just, to. Just a couple of weeks ago, um, for one of our favorite bars in the city, um, mm -hmm. with a big sherry theme around it, El Loco, um, do a Porque No class for. That would have been late March. Um, yeah. For their one year anniversary and do a sherry education there. And Oops. all that got canceled too. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it pales into comparison to what so many folks are dealing with right now. So it's mm -hmm. I almost, you know, almost reluctant to bring it up, but it's like just these, you know, amazing sort of beautiful things that could have daily or just life beautiful things that could happen or not happening right that that's the hard part it is where you could sort of like give back to the community do something great for this great um you know new bar it would have been their one year again their one year anniversary mm -hmm. it's hard for small business right now i'm i'm well yeah we got to talk about that later like there's so many folks that need help and um it's hard to decide where to Put that help right mm -hmm. now. So we're talking today about okay, how do we help the kids at your school that are disadvantaged and don't you know have a thing? How do we help restaurants and hospitality and bars? You know, mm -hmm. how do you, how do we help people like you know friends? And, you know, family immediate, immediate family. Like it's like the the needs are limitless right now, and there's no one answer and there's no right or wrong answer about where to help but um it, it sucks where you have to like sort of prioritize where where you're going to help you know um but yeah that's definitely a conversation we're having this weekend about how do we how do we help and yeah. uh, you know where where can we help the most and have the most impact or or go to the place with the most need um mm -hmm. it's tough it's, um, these are these are weird times yeah it's heartbreaking and it's, you know you see a lot of neat things you see a lot of um <clears throat> like uh one of our local restaurants print porch when you order from them you also have the option to log on and um order some food, some takeout for local healthcare workers. And yeah, we could probably that's a great program. Nice, yeah, some nice fried chicken, southern cuisine, and like, wow, this is awesome. You know, a little. That's an easy one to do, right? Because it's for it's, sure. Because that's like, not. Okay. Or order a pizza or something. You know, that that's. But it's it's when you get into like where you know where are you going to write a check. Not yeah. literally, cause nobody writes checks anymore. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, you know what I mean. Like donate. Yeah. Like significant amounts of money, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. Oh, for sure. Hey, do you want to see what comes out? The floaties, yeah. Let's just see. Let's see what comes out. That's, oh, you didn't. Uh, it's not throwing that much. Oh, is there's it? something. What do you got? I don't know. <laughs> you look. Oh, that's just like. What's that thing? 
It's a little tartaric. It's fine. That line. Yeah, I see it. Okay. It's not gonna kill you. I would drink uh, that. It's sanitized as alcohol. In that sense. Okay, so it's like a piece of. It's a piece of awesome. It's fun. Okay. I mean, I'm not gonna not drink it. I was gonna say, if you're not gonna drink it, throw it in my glass. That scares you. Okay, just throw this piece of whatever. You could put your finger in there and fish it out if you really wanted to. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It's like a small piece of twig or it's not a twig. It's, like... <laughs> it's a tree branch. No, it's like it's tartaric. It's, like a it's... Piece of bark. It's tartaric. It's like a redwood. <laughs> I'm just gonna stop telling you what it is so that so you could just apply whatever loose, crazy ass theory you want to what that might be. <laughs> yeah, keep going. Yeah, it's, it's uh, whatever. It's, yeah. It's tartaric. I didn't know. It's, Wait. A, it's, fr it's from an alien. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? Good, Let's end this. We're, we're torturing people. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Let's finish this. Salud. Salud.